You know, when I, when I made that knife with that father and son and, and seen a dream come true, I knew that was my passion. You know, my passion was forging. And I felt it, you know, deep inside when I worked with these other folks. And uh, I get a great love of teaching. But I knew this is what I wanted to do now. And so I had a direction to go, which is forging memories with folks. And so I started advertising and telling people, hey, come on into my shop. Let's forge a memory. And the joy I get out of it watching people, you know, I watch grown men become 17-year-old boys again. You know, I see little kids gain confidence in their own abilities. I mean, this is so cool. And, and after seeing a few times of that with that father and son, I've been doing this for so long, I've seen kids grow up in front of my forge. Coming every year to visit and make something new again. I did that in a small little building in, at Smoky Mountain Knife Works in the parking lot, that little brick building. And you know, I outgrew it the first three months trying to forge a memory. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I struggled doing a lot of people, you know, I, I just couldn't reach as many people as I wanted. And then one day a man walked in. He had a vision. He's a property owner downtown Pigeon Forge. And his hobby is to be a blacksmith. Uh, this man has a lot of history in his town, him and his family. And he really wanted a forge here to where folks can come in and just sit around and enjoy it. And so he come to me and said, said, Mr. Bowman, he said, if I built you a blacksmith shop downtown Pigeon Forge, would you come? I said, yes, sir. And, uh, you know, his name is Bob Benson, and uh, he's a really good guy. And, you know, I give a lot of people credit for my success. It's people like Bob Benson who believed in me, you know. And so uh, it took us a few years to get this going, and we had to come up with a name, and we said Iron Mountain. And Iron Mountain is just right down the road. We even have an Iron Mountain Road here in town. And so we really didn't know what we was building, but I knew what we were fixing to build would be a monster. And uh, I had one other guy working with me, helping me, and I told him, I said, listen, I said, we're fixing to open up a blacksmith shop in one of the most visited parks of the world. And we're going to let people come in from five-year-old to 105. And we're going to put a hammer in their hand and let them, let them bang on some metal. And then it all started coming together. You know, we leveled the property. We were starting to build something. You know, anticipation was coming. And then Iron Mountain Metalcraft was born. And then our motto, of course, is forge a memory. And so I encourage anybody in the United States to come and forge a memory with a blacksmith near you. I mean, it is so fulfilling for me. This is my life's dream. I need a minute. <laughs> and you know, uh, we'll get into some more stuff about me later because, you know, just a real quick one. You know, born deep in the woods, you know, before the age of five, you know, I thought that's the way everybody lived, the way I lived. You know, and then I go to school. Dang, what is this? I ain't like these kids. You know, dude, they got good clothes. You know, they got new books. You know, I didn't, you know, we didn't have nothing like that. But I thought it was normal way of life. You know, growing up in the deep country, you know, we slaughtered our own hogs. We went out and slaughtered our own chickens. We collected our eggs. And then you go to school and you realize I'm not the same type person. And then six, seven, eight year old, I knew I wasn't like these other kids. And I started trapping as a little kid. And I'd run my trap line before I'd go to school. And I was catching muskrat and beaver and otter and, and foxes and coons and possums. And not only was that bringing food into the household, it was putting money in our pockets. Because I knew my mom and dad were struggling. You know, that's why I was different. I wasn't like the other kids. And so, uh, growing up, I spent most of my childhood in the mountains, in the woods, tracking animals, you know. I loved that. 
I love the fact of getting in nature. And I, you know, I've hunted all over the United States. I've hunted Africa. And uh, people ask me, well, what's your passion? Besides forging, being in a tree stand one hour before light, and it starts getting daylight, you hear a squirrel scamper across the limb, make the dew fall. You hear a bird chirp. Yeah, life is happening. A new day is born. You know, that magic. Oh, that's hunting. You know, and me tracking the animals and knowing where they're going, knowing where they're feeding, knowing where they're bedding down. That's my passion. Yeah, me growing up with my grandfather, you know, around him and him being a blacksmith and shoeing horses, the smell. You know, you fire up a cold forge in the morning, it, 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 a brisk morning, and you get that smell going, you know. But he also taught me things like digging ginseng, living off the land. I mean, I spent so much time in the woods as a kid, you know. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And, and to see a real blacksmith shop growing up, you know, uh, sawdust floors, you know, because sawdust won't burn. And, and, and watching him take, uh, you know, uh, I had a customer in here one day talk about a bumper pile. And it dawned on me. I remember a bumper pile at my grandfather's. It was huge, six feet tall, six feet deep. They was important to the blacksmith back then. They could take a car bumper, make a square shovel, a pointed shovel, a hay rake, a garden hoe, a tater spade. And it's important, you know, them car bumpers. I watched him do it, you know, time and time again. And every once in a while, something will happen, I'll meet somebody or something happened in the forge, and it'll spring back another memory of my childhood. So what I'm doing now with y'all is memories from my childhood shared with my grandfather. You know, he made me feel good. He let me work on things. He let me crank that old coal forge for him, you know. That was my job. And uh, loved every minute of it, you know. That coal forge are roaring and, and watching him manipulate that metal with such precision with that hammer, you know. It, it, you know, He never made knives, he really didn't, you know. But he, he, was, a, he was a really, he make anything else, you know, and uh, it, it was really cool growing up seeing that, you know, and, and then of course I went in the military and, and got away from it for a long time. Uh, I actually had a pretty serious injury in the military you know, on the right side of my head. And uh, you know, I've had headaches my whole life, but you know, what really helped me the most, what really changed my life for the better is forging, you know. Even coming back from injuries, uh, you know, I've had this leg broke plumb off. A, a man tried to murder me and uh, cut my leg off. And, uh, you know, it's been a long road getting here, but believe me, if you got a dream and a passion, stick with it. Me personally, uh, some know my story, some don't, but you know, uh, I've, got an eighth, I've got a ninth grade education. Went and got my GED, joined the military, and I've worked every day of my life and it pays off. You know, the forging, it saved my life. It really did. During that time, you know, you can't support your family. You know, you can't pay your bills. Forging saved my life. 